Reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. General, General, General Penitentiary. So watch it, youths in the street, alert. Yo, don't do the devil work. You see it, Michael Rosen does. For over 50 years, Black Uhuru has remained one of the most popular recognized prolific reggae band from Jamaica and have earned several achievements in the music industry, including winning the first ever Grammy Award for reggae music. But despite all these successes, an increasingly bitter feud has over the years set members against each other in a legal dispute, all centers on who has the right to use the name Black Uhuru and who is the real founder of the band. My name is Ras Dennis, and you are welcome back to another video by Reggae Gist Extra. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra, the episode of Michael Rose, an ex-member of the Black Uhuru Band. Today's episode is all about Michael Rose. He became Black Uhuru's lead singer and primary songwriter, leading the group through seven studio albums, starting with Showcase in 1979 and also including the critically acclaimed Red in 1981 and the Grammy Award-winning Anthem in 1983. That album won the award for Best Reggae Album in 1985, the first year of that award's existence. Kindly subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Black Uhuru emerged at the perfect and ideal moment when Jamaica was faced with turmoil, confusions, and difficulties. Throughout the late 1970s the country and its people were being faced with outside imperialist threats, political violence, a teetering and unstable economy, covert United States intervention, and an angry, politicized youth. Reggae music no longer reflected change and was in need of its own uprising. Black Uhuru was seen through some eyes as the saving grace of this desperate time. The band was originally formed by Derek Ducky Simpson, Don Carlos, and Garth Dennis in 1971, and like almost all the front-ranked Jamaican groups, Black Uhuru proclaims a Rastafari faith that has been crucial in shaping its music and its message. Don Carlos left the group for a solo career and Garth Dennis left to perform as a member of the successful Roots group, The Wailing Souls. Simpson remained to what seemed like one of many second-generation, Rasta-inspired vocal groups until he was drawn to the powerful and magical voice of Michael Rose. Shortly after Simpson and Rose began recording, they heard the ethereal voice of South Carolina-born, Columbia graduate and Rasta sister, Sandra Puma Jones. She was introduced to the group by Kojo, a good friend of Mortimer Plano. It wasn't until Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare graced the stage alongside the trio that they became the Black Uhuru that most are familiar with. It should be noted that that Michael Rose was the one who took Black Uhuru to Sly and Robbie. Their music combined a deep spirituality, edgy political anger and rhythm driven by the superstar combo of Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. Talking about Michael Rose, he was born in Kingston on July 11, 1957. Not able to complete his high school education at St. George's College, he was fortunate to turn to music through the influence of his older brother, Joseph. Michael, and his beautiful voice, would meet regularly in Kingston with such singers, musicians, writers, and producers as Dennis Brown, John Holt, Big Youth, The Wailers, Niney The Observer, Gregory Isaacs, Sly and Robbie, and Owen Gray. 
As frontman for Black Uhuru, singer Michael Rose approached reggae stardom on the international level of Jimmy Cliff, Bob Marley, and Peter Tosh. Rose was the singer-songwriter in the group's glory days of the early 1980s. He wrote one of Uhuru's best-loved songs, Youth of Eglinton, along with Ducky Simpson and Puma Jones, and backed by Sly and Robbie, he recorded classic albums such as Sensamilla, Red, and Chill Out. Another album, Anthem earned the first Grammy Award for a reggae recording. In fact, one can comfortable say that Michael Rose took Black Uhuru International. This successful period is now documented on the box set, Liberation. Through each of these albums, Rose's role can be easily identified in both his distinctive vocal style and his conscious lyrics and songs. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra, the episode of Michael Rose, an ex-member of the Black Uhuru Band. Everything about Black Uhuru was right, the time, the message, the vibe. It was fresh and the people were hungry for it, said Rose. Michael Rose left Uhuru in 1985 over differences with Ducky Simpson. When dissension splintered the group and backup singer and dancer Sandra Puma Jones passed away from cancer, Ducky Simpson brought in Janet Olaf Unkick Reed as a replacement and junior Reed for lead vocal chores while Rose pursued a solo career. Around 1987, Junior Reed was unable to obtain a U.S. visa and unable to tour, he left the band, followed shortly by Olaf Unkick. Black Uhuru, now reduced to Simpson alone, and had been booked to play at an awards ceremony in California, which coincidentally had original Uhuru members Don Carlos and Garth Dennis on the bill, and they took the opportunity to reunite the original lineup for a performance at the event and decided to continue afterwards. The Now album followed in 1991 and was also nominated for a Grammy. In 1996, the group fragmented again, with Simpson leaving to tour Europe with dub poet Yasu Zafari under the name Black Uhuru, while Carlos and Dennis also toured the U.S. under the same name. A legal battle over the name followed, won by Simpson in 1997. Carlos resumed his solo career, while Simpson formed a new lineup of Black Uhuru with Andrew Bees and Jennifer Connelly. Only two albums, Unification and Dynasty, were released before Bees went back to pursue his solo career in 2003. In February 2004, it was announced in the Jamaican press that Simpson and Michael Rose had reunited under the name Black Uhuru featuring Michael Rose. Together with a female backing singer named K-Star, they released a single, Dollars, and performed at several concerts including Western Consciousness 2004 on April 28th in Jamaica, of which a live video was released shortly thereafter. A new album was reported to be in progress, although it was never released. The group toured throughout Europe in 2006. In February 2018, Simpsons team claims they saw Rose advertising himself as the voice of Black Uhuru for a show in the United States and they sue him. This didn't go down well with Michael Rose. In an interview with Reggae Vibes, he said, He had some guy give me a summons, saying I'm using Black Uhuru's name. And I wasn't using no Black Uhuru name. That guy, Simpson, is just trouble. Rose further accused Simpson of slandering him, especially what he said about him with Puma Jones, that is, he treated Puma bad when there was nothing like that, not even when his own wife is related to Puma's husband. Before we close the curtain on this, remember, two enemies can become friends by letting history be history, forgiving each other of whatever was in the way, trusting, and moving on. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe. Give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis.